is an iconic moment of gaming history. The intro you just saw is the re-release of Pokemon Red. Pokemon Fire Red. This is the story of how Pokemon, a gaming juggernaut of modern day, became Pokemon as we all know it today. Picture it. On April 26, 1989, a young Satoshi Tajiri, Ken Sugimori, and Junichi Masuda start a video game development company in the Chiyoda Prefecture of Tokyo, Japan called Game Freak and dish out Mendel Palace for the NDS, Quinty for the Famicom. The game developer Satoshi Tajiri pitched the concept of Pokemon to Nintendo's staff in 1990 and was met with skepticism. They believed his ideas were too ambitious and found it difficult to see the appeal. However, Shigeru Miyamoto, the man who worked on such franchises as Mario, Legend of Zelda, and Donkey Kong saw great potential in the idea and convinced the company to go ahead with the project. Fun fact, Rhydon was the first Pokemon ever coded, not beautiful. The initial concept for Pokemon stemmed from the hobby of insect collecting, a popular pastime which the Jerry enjoyed as a child. While growing up, however, he observed more urbanization taking place in the town where he lived, and as a result, the insect population declined. The bug type Pokemon pays homage to the original concept. Tajiri noticed that Kid now played in their homes instead of outside, and he came up with the idea of a video game containing creatures that resembled insects, called Pokemon. He thought kids qu could relate with the Pokemon by individually naming them and controlling them to represent fear or anger as a good way of relieving stress. However, Pokemon never bleed or die in battle, only faint. This was a very touchy subject to Tajiri, as he did not want to further fill the gaming world with pointless violence. When the Game Boy was released, Tajiri thought the system was perfect for his idea, especially because of the link cable, which he envisioned would allow players to trade Pokemon with each other. This concept of trading information was new to the video game industry because previously connection cables were only used for competition. I imagine a chunk of information being transferred by connecting two Game Boys with special cables, and I went, wow! That's really going to be something, said Tajiri. Upon hearing of the Pokemon concept, Shigeru Miyamoto suggested creating multiple cartridges with different Pokemon in each, knowing it would assist the training aspect. Tajiri was also influenced by Square's Game Boy game, The Final Fantasy Legend, noting in an interview that the game gave him the idea that more than just action games could be developed for the handheld. The main characters were named after Tajiri himself, as Satoshi, who is described as Tajiri in his youth, and his longtime friend, role model, mentor, and fellow Nintendo developer Shigeru Miyamoto as Shigeru, Ken Sugimori, an artist and a longtime friend of Tajiri, headed the development of the drawings and designs of the, Poke of the Pokemon working with a team of fewer than 10 people who conceived the various designs of all 151 Pokemon. Atsuko Nashida created the designs for Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and many others. Sugimori, in turn, finalized each design, drawing the Pokemon from various angles in order to assist the game freak's graphics department in properly rendering the creature. 
Music for the game was composed by Junichi Masuda, who utilized the four sound channels of the Game Boy to create both melodies and sound, sound effects in the Pokemon cries heard upon encountering them. You can know that the game's opening theme, titled Monster, was produced with the image of battle scenes in mind. Using white noise sounds like marching music and mm, imitate snare drum. Originally called Capsule Monsters, the game's title went becoming Kapuman and Kapuman before eventually settling upon Pocket Monsters. The jury always thought that Nintendo would re reject his game as the company did not really understand the concept at first. However, the, the games turned out to be a success, something the Jerry and Nintendo never expected, especially because of the declining popularity of the Game Boy. The Jerry said that the Pokeball concept was inspired by Ultra 7's capsule monsters from the Tokusatsu superhero television series Ultra 7. Nintendo spent 13 million on marketing Pokemon Red and Blue in the United States. The music was composed by Junichi Matsuda at his home on a Commodore Amiga computer, which only features PCM sample playback and converted to the Game Boy with a program he had written. In Japan, Pocket Monsters Red and Green were the first versions released. Development was completed by October 1995 and release was originally planned for the t December 21st, 1995, but was delayed until February 27th, 1996 because of derivative products were not yet ready for sale. After a slow start, they continued to sell well. Several months later, Pocket Monsters Blue was released in Japan as a mail order only special edition to subscribers of Koro Koro Comic on October 15th, 1996. It was later released to general retail on October 10th, 1999 and features updated in-game artwork and new dialogue using Blastoise as its mascot. The code, script, and artwork for Blue were used for the international releases of Red and Green, which were renamed to Red and Blue. The Japanese Blue edition of the game features all but a handful of Pokemon available in Red and Green, making certain Pokemon exclusive to the original editions. To create more interest in the games, Tajiri revealed an extra Pokemon called Mew, hidden within them, which he believed created a lot of rumors and myths about the game and kept the interest alive. The creature was originally added by Shigeki Morimoto as an internal prank and was not intended to be exposed to consumers. It was not until later that Nintendo decided to distribute Mew through a Nintendo promotional event. However, in 2003, a glitch became widely known and could be exploited, so anyone could obtain the elusive Pokemon. During the North American localization of Pokemon, a small team led by Hiro Nakamura went through the individual Pokemon, renaming them for Western audiences based on their appearance and characteristics. After the approval from Nintendo in addition, during this process, Nintendo trademarked the 151 Pokemon names in order to ensure they would be unique to the franchise. During the translation process, it became apparent that simply altering the game's text from Japanese to English was impossible. The games had to be entirely reprogrammed from scratch due to fragile states in their source code, a side effect of the unusually lengthy development time. Therefore, the games were based on the more modern Japanese version of Blue, modeling its programming and artwork after Blue, but keeping the same distribution of Pokemon found in the Japanese red and green cartridges, respectively. As the finished red and blue versions were being prepared for release, Nintendo allegedly spent over $15 million to promote the game, fearing the series would not be appealing to American children. The Western localization team warned that the cute monsters may not be accepted by American audiences and instead recommended that they be redesigned and beefed up. Then president of Nintendo, Hiroshi Yamauchi refused and instead viewed the game's possible reception in America as a challenge to face. Despite these setbacks, the reprogrammed red and blue versions, with their original creature designs, were eventually released in North America on September 28, 1998, over two and a half years after red and green debuted in Japan. The games were received extremely well by the foreign audiences and Pokemon went to become a lucrative franchise in America. The same versions 
were later released in Australia sometime later in 1998, and in Europe on October 5th, 1999, being the second to last video game released for the original Game Boy in Europe, with Pokemon Yellow version, Special Pikachu Edition, being the last. If you like this content, please consider liking this video, commenting if you can, and subscribing to this channel, as well as sharing this video and hitting the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.